Our world doesn't really prepare you for failure because you're going to fail multiple times. Failure is an education. Not achieving goals we've had. Stopping the project completely. Our solution may not be the solution. The hardest part is just being open to criticism and being open to seeing the fact that the market isn't responding the way you wanted it to. But when it comes to failure, I, th I think what we've found more and more and, and what we've had a lot of investors very candidly tell us is the market potential for this is just massive. This, if this fails, it's because of you. 25 brilliant entrepreneurs working on ventures in 17 countries and hailing from six continents will convene this summer in Boulder. Living under the same roof and sharing the same meals for 10 weeks, they have convened in Boulder this summer for one reason, to create ventures that future generations will remember as having changed the world. Ventures that will effectively address a social or environmental need, that are financially self-sustaining, and that will ultimately scale to meet the needs of at least one million people. It's no big deal. That is, that is amazing. About $3.50 for breakfast or for lunch and dinner today. That's my cheese. That is my looking bread. good. Oh yeah. It's going to be delicious. Oh, yeah. Sierra Leone's a really complicated country. Freetown is filthy and frantic, but you can't help loving the place. Really starting in high school, I, I knew that I wanted to get to Sub-Saharan Africa and really, really spend the rest of my life there. There's very little that's superficial there. There's a different way of thinking uh, that I think is more profound. <laughs> Who are the happiest people on earth? It's, it's not Americans or, or people who are based, you know, living around kind of material cultures. It's, it's people that have extended kinship networks and, and close relations to their history. So my, my grandfather uh, took me to Indonesia and East Timor in 2006. We were staying in, in the Hotel Timor, which is your classic nice uh, hotel built for expatriates and non-profit workers who, who travel there temporarily and then evaporate. I looked out, is, is, you know, we're on, eating on fine china, big glass window, and immediately across the street, refugee camp. And I can see the refugees, and they can see me, and, and when I looked at me through their eyes, I wasn't, I wasn't very happy with what I saw. Flying away from that situation with, with a lot of the city still smoking, literally, really really made me angry with myself especially but uh, but also the systems that had that had failed and continue to fail the people there had had my grandfather not taken me to East Timor and told me don't tell your parents we're going to East Timor until we get back because it was there it was by any other name it was war uh, I wouldn't I wouldn't have seen that uh, and I needed I needed a reality slap Uh, we can have a quarter, yeah, we got the quarterback, someone who can hold people to deliverables and make sure that they're checking in code and that the code is good. You know somebody. I'm, I, know, I know a couple, and, and I need to think who's going to be right. Uh, excellent. That'd be great. Just constant stimulating conversations. It, and that is just really personified what the Unreasonable Institute has been so far. I think that you want your brand name to be verb capable. For example, Google something or yeah. people say zip car it. Preferably one word, maybe even one syllable. The kids will say like, oh, we should just blank it back to campus. Zong it. Zong yeah, zong it back to campus. At Mess Express, we're committed to providing safe transportation to the 2.8 million college students who drive drunk every year. The reason I don't like Mess Express anymore is because of that maturity, you know, the immaturity. It's not a good brand. It's not a good brand, exactly. Very rarely is a great brand actually about the name. What the hell is Apple? It has nothing to do with like computers, it has nothing to do with the values of the company. It has to do with the fact that they've built a great brand around it. What about Zipline? Zipline? Is that a brand name? Vamoose, what about Vamoose? Vamoose? Skedaddle. I think we're on to the right direction. I Skedaddle. I think I like, those guys are cool. I mean, my brain hurts, but in a good way. It just everybody is just on the same page. So every morning, I walk up from my room, I go to Ben's room to say hi, good morning, and he's on the conference call. So I walk away, I get some breakfast, and I think to myself, all right, I'll come back in an hour. I come back an hour later, still on the phone. 
I guess my work ethic could be summarized as unhealthy. <laughs> And uh, I'll, I'll drink I'll drink quite a few cups of coffee, quite a few pots every day. Um, but it's really, it's all just because I love what I'm doing. The vision that brought me before you today is to bring financial services to the entrepreneurial poor in 160 characters or less. What does that mean? Mobile money is to emerging markets what ATM cards and ATM machines are here in the West. They allow people to transfer money instantly, securely, over their mobile phone. Let's go to the problem. 36% of humanity has zero access to formal financial services. To put that in context... Microfinance is really normal finance. It's, it's, it's everything we would, the kind of financial services we would look to, but designed and, and tailored uh, to meet a market that's otherwise uh, been precluded. And microcredit is, is the simple issuing of, of uh, a small loan. That's also oh, so you credit. open your phone and put in a different card. Yeah, so you these, are these mobile. Are the cards. You and, are. and they have they have software built onto each of them. Some of them like There's a mobile money system menu uh, interface built into that software. Where we come in is that integration point that sits between the mobile money system and the microfinance core banking software. We make them communicate in real time. The borrower makes a repayment in, in a format they know, in addition to the borrower saving money from and, and time for walking, paying taxis, whatever they're doing to repay a loan, you have back office efficiencies for the microfinance institution that increase uh, can be passed on to the borrower in the form of lower interest, uh, which would then allow microfinance to really expand. So far, so good. You, uh, this is a good story to tell, but Mr. Investor says, what are the risks? What are risks have you identified and how do you mitigate them? I think one of the major risks is just making sure that we've properly indemnified ourselves, that we have, um, you know, separate books for each country, um, and and uh, that we've we've really gotten a, a strong understanding of the local regulation. Um, there there are all sorts of points where our, our enterprises could just evaporate. What what we've approached, what Frontline SMS Credit is approaching, is far more sophisticated than my education has, has uh, prepared me for. Ben and Matt are sort of in interesting scenarios where Ben is further along with his venture while Matt's still you know, identifying and perfecting his model. So you'll see a great relationship here in, at the Unreasonable Institute where peers, the fellow, peer fellows, really work together. They balance each other out. They use their expertise and help someone else who might have sort of a weakness. You know, like, and that's what I've been noticing is that like everything I struggle with on a daily basis internally is something that you know you've expressed to me that you've expressed to me and, that, you know, and that's the fellows that's the difficulty of like entrepreneurship you it's always seemed like this lonely game right like you're, it's yeah. only for you you work 100 hours weeks and you know that doesn't need to be the case like you can turn to some people like you don't need to hide your ideas hide your feelings your frustrations you don't always have to be perfect and then it's great, like you know there is a significant burden uh, duty responsibility on on everyone's shoulders but but again the community here has, has been phenomenal too because when i'm in public uh, you know, when, when all of us are in public, we, we have to be in control, especially when we're talking to an investor. We know the numbers, we know the business, we own this. But privately, when we're together and we can actually talk about weaknesses and talk about fears and, and talk about vulnerabilities and the fact that, you know, not only is this greater than us, it's more challenging than a lot of us are, are, are capable of handling. There's a Ubuntu. It, it means I am because we are and it's a common theme across Africa. You're, you are because your community is with you. Um, and the individualism that, that we've been raised in and, and, and really thrive in uh, just isn't there. You know, there's a, there's a big tendency to really uh, kind of idolize the individual and assume that the, you know, people make it all on their own. It's just not true. I, I owe almost everything to, to, my, to my social network, to my social capital. What we're doing, what everyone at, at Unreasonable is doing, is risky and uncertain, and probably a little naive and definitely unreasonable. Um, so to have those networks is, is really exceptional. If we're successful, if I can be a part of this change that impacts millions of people, I mean, I, I, I think it's a beautiful thought. Um, I could die tomorrow happy, having known that, that I've done something that, that's lasting. You know, because everything else, all of the other, the material kind of focus is, is fleeting, it ends.
Ha <laughs> ha